Hey guys, let me just share with you this new AI extension I have been using for the past few months. I have been testing a lot of AI tools and apps and extensions, but this one is one of the few that stayed within my workflow. So I think it's, it's nice to share with you as well. It's called Merlin. And if you go to merlin.foyer.work, you will then see these two big install buttons, one for Chrome, one for Edge. I think most of you will use Chrome, so just install it there and then you will go to your, your main uh, browser. In the right top corner where your extensions are, there you will see that now Merlin has been added there. And if you click that, you will get here to this basic interface. You, you see that I already had some uh, basic conversation just now to test a little bit. I can say, hey, what is the purpose of life? You know, things that you ask an AI chatbot, of course. And there, you know, it will give an answer based on the LLM or the large language model that you have selected. And you can do that on top here. So I'm using by default GPT-4. You can also use GPT-3.5, Cloud 2, Cloud Instant or Llama. And you can enable or disable access to web. Pretty dope that you have that all in one interface. I'm not using it that much yet, but I'm probably going to use it more. I, know, I already see that I'm using ChatGPT more inside Merlin than inside the default yeah, ChatGPT OpenAI interface environment. If you go then to the left, to the sidebar, you see that I have selected the dark team. By default, it's this, but you know, who wants that? Just go for dark. And then if you go to settings, you will get this screen. You can select a, uh, a few default uh, preferences like the language and the preferred model. For me, that's GPT-4. You can also then select the or enable the different features of Merlin and that's really where the power of Merlin lies. So I use these three, YouTube, Blog, Summarizer and the Merlin search box. I don't use it for social media and Gmail, although it's enabled, but I, I am barely on LinkedIn, Twitter on, or Gmail. I use other email clients for that, but I will just show you in this video briefly these three use cases or features. So first one, YouTube. As you can see, I was watching this John Fervecki interview. It's almost four hours long, so it's quite extensive. And it's also extremely condensed with information on very high level philosophical abstract ideas. So it, yeah, a little bit of guidance throughout the talk can be useful. As you can see in this case, the author of the channel already added some chapters in there but merlin goes one step beyond i will show you that right now you see here next to the like button there is this summarize button and also on the right that's where i usually go you see there is this merlin pop-up so if i go there you see that if you have pressed this button i already did it before because i was watching it you will get in the sidebar a summary of the entire conversation right here so that it's a little bit of a, a short introduction but then you get time stamped the specific sub chapters of the interview this works a little bit like snippet works or snipped the podcast app which i also made a video on i will link that above what it does it takes the transcript of the video or of the podcast and then based on that it gives you the key takeaways so just to give you an idea of how that goes let's pick something random here the separation of rationality and science from deep transformative spirituality led to the development of science and the split between two worlds okay sounds pretty uh, interesting and then you click click to expand and here we see now three key takeaways from this little sub chapter and that is why it goes one step further than just the, the chapters it already lets you know, or it gives you like the key points from that specific uh, little uh, little timestamp in there. And what you can do even is you can take these key takeaways and you can then sync those to your Readwise or your second brain. For those of you that don't know what Readwise is, uh, I will link again above a 
video that we made. You can get on a daily basis the highlights that you want to review so that you integrate knowledge more into your being. Okay, that's the first one. Let's go to use case or feature number two. Here you see that I was reading a blog article. It's called Psychedelics Sync Neurons, A Glimpse into Consciousness and Psychosis. Okay, I got forwarded this this blog last week somewhere. I didn't read it yet, but it's yeah, it's a quite a extensive read as you can see. Now I get sent a lot of articles and I don't have time to read them all. I ju just want to see the the quick highlights and what it's about. In this case, if I click on the right here, you see the Merlin pop up again showing up. If I click summarize, it will zap through dimensions and it will give me now of this article a nice summary. It's still a bit long to be honest. I think this is, this is quite a long summary, uh, especially when you look at the article itself. But well, you can imagine if you have really long blogs or skyscraper articles, if you then go through it like this, this will definitely save you uh, a lot of time. Now what you can do, and that's quite, quite cool, you can now take this information, this, uh, this summary, and you press the button here below, let's chat. Now I get ChatGPT, the interface directly in my browser, in my, in my window. And th this is cool because now I can say, for example, okay, I think this is still a bit long. Summarize this in 20 words. Let's see what it comes up with. Research it at the university, measured, blah, blah, blah. Okay, very nice. It gives me now a, like a super short summary of this entire article. Um, in this case, you see there was already a summary in the article itself, but usually that's not the case. Um, but yeah, you can see the power here. One thing to mention is that by default in this interface, it goes back to GPT 3.5 and no web access. Why? While I in my preferences, in my settings, I have put this to GPT-4. And th yeah, I didn't find a fix for that yet, but that's a bit weird. So every time then that I want to have a conversation here, I'd have to update it to GPT-4. So yeah, just a, a small uh, improvement area for Merlin. Also, you see here this, uh, this lightning bolt emoji with 1756. These are my credits, so I have 2,000 credits a month because I am on the, the basic pro plan. That's around 9 bucks a month. For me, that's worth it at this point. If you use the free account, I think it's 50 credits. So yeah, well, it's, a, it's their business model. Makes sense, right? But um, yeah, for me, that's worth it. Now, the third use case, you can see I already had a tab open. I googled what are psychedelics, just to, as an example, because then here in the sidebar, or actually, let's just do it live, right? Let's, what are uh, psychedelic plans? You can see how fast it goes. So you will see that it will take a while for Merlin to pop up in the sidebar, and then it will give you an answer based on your search query. And this is quite cool. And I also think this will be a bit more the future because what you already see is that third-party AI apps are now already being integrated into Google. And you can use Google, the, the way you use the SERP or the, the search engine, it gets more of a direct feedback response. So you get the answer already presented to you. And in the past, what I did, if you go to the SERP right here, the search engine results page, you have to scan through different websites. You have to go through the one that you think is most relevant. Most of the time it's one of the top three uh, results. And then you have to f look in there to, to find your specific answer. And in this case, you already see like it's, it's instant answer to your, to your question, to your query. And yeah, I'm guessing, assuming that Google will move into this direction um, because yeah, this is of course far superior to like this experience where you have to go through it yourself with one big caveat, it's still a large language model, so it's not always correct. And you have to be really, yeah, you, you need to be sharp with that because I've noticed that, uh, and I think there's more general issue with AI, that it's not always factually correct. So ju don't just copy and paste, but of course that's also an issue with uh, all these other things. Um, but yeah, just make sure that if you know something about a subject and you see an error, then 
yeah, don't just uh, just copy paste that. Anyway, that's the three main use cases I use it for. So for YouTube summaries, for blog summaries, and for uh, search engine responses. And yeah, for me, that's worth it, the, the nine bucks. There's also a free version, go for it if you want. Uh, we're not affiliated with them, but it's just, uh, it's, just nice, it's a nice tool. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.